little congregation. Uh, as you obviously, hopefully know, this is Pastor Dan. I just wanted to share with you something really important that uh, council is hoping uh, will be approved for next year's budget, uh, and that is the Congregational Assistance Program. Uh, you may remember just before COVID hit, uh, we sent out draft uh, brochures, flyers about the Congregational Assistance Program, but I just wanted to put it on your radar uh, again and uh, let you know that it will be included in the budget proposal for this year. So uh, when you come to the congregational meeting or when you vote via proxy, uh, you will have the opportunity uh, when voting on the budget to, uh, to approve it or to um, make amendments or whatever uh, you need to do. Uh, but I would encourage you to prayerfully consider uh, approving uh, the Congregational Assistance Plan as part of our budget for 2021. And I just wanted to read to you the testimony of of a pastor who has experienced uh, the good that the Congregational Assistance Program has done for, uh, for their church. And so this is from uh, Pastor Joan, who said, I started as a pastor before the Congregational Assistance Plan uh, cap began, so I know the old model. It went like this. A family or individual came with a problem, and the pastor or deacon said, we've got to get some help for these people. Often the family couldn't afford counseling, yet we wanted them to be helped. And that meant trying to devise wise policies. Where should they go? How many sessions? Who could approve this? So many internal conversations had to take place while we were also striving to respect confidentiality. We wanted the people to feel cared for, but often it was not very safe to ask for help. But now we have, says Joan, the Congregational Assistance Plan, and it's fantastic. It's such a relief. As a pastor, I make pastoral visits, but I know I'm not a counselor. I'd rather people went to someone who has professional training. Now I'm at a point where that's not a problem because of CAP. Every quarter, our church gets a CAP usage report with no names or identifying information. As I was looking at the statistics once, I found it interesting that many of the people who went for assistance were men. I wondered if being part of CAP made it easier for men to seek help, which is great. You want to create a culture in your family or congregation where going for counseling is a sign of strength, not weakness. I have benefited from CAP myself, says Joan, and I can personally echo, uh, as your pastor, Pastor Dan, that I myself have also benefited from CAP. Somehow, Joan says, I had thought that when you get to this point in life, uh, things would just coast. But in fact, I have found that there are constant changes and challenges. She goes on to say, as my husband and I were thinking about our future life choices, we realized it would be useful to have someone else walk through this with us. The counselor helped normalize the midlife issues we were dealing with, and it was very beneficial. I want CAP to help other people as well. I was preaching in a different congregation, and someone approached me asking if I would be willing to provide counseling. I said if their church had the CAP program. I, I asked if their church had the CAP program. Although some had advocated for it, the pastor didn't think enough people in the congregation needed the program. I feel so sorry for people like that. I think pastors don't know how many people might actually take advantage of the program until they have it in place. I'm so thankful that the initiative continues and grows. Not one church has ceased using the program, and more and more are joining. Further, CAP is gaining attention among professionals.
an academic essay co-authored with a leading Canadian psychotherapy researcher entitled A Tale of Two Churches, The Development of a Congregational Assistance Plan, will soon be published in the prestigious U.S. Journal of Spirituality in Mental Health. With Shalem's Congregational Assistance Plan, a church makes available to all of its parishioners up to six counseling sessions per year for, from a roster of local and now because of the increase in uh, internet counseling uh, from all over uh, of local master's degree level qualified Christian psychotherapists anonymously and at no cost to the parishioner. By taking a community approach to decision-making about mental health issues, CAP is meeting real needs for churches and parishioners by improving relationships, marriages, families, and people's ability to cope with hardships in life. So what's the cost, you ask? CAP costs, and this is as of a couple years ago, but it should be in the ballpark anyways, CAP costs between $1,500 and $6,000 annually per church, depending on the size of the congregation. Please, your council uh, and I uh, want us very much believe that it is good as a way to care for the people in our congregation to become partners in this critical work uh, through our financial support, our budget, um, so that we can uh, provide our own congregation members with uh, qualified professional Christian counseling uh, opportunities. Here are some of the uh, presenting issues that people come to. And of course, this is all anonymous, but it's categorized. We get a report every uh, quarter uh, that says uh, why people are coming. Uh, not who's coming, but why people are coming. Uh, people come because of family issues, about almost 30%. Um, some because of uh, marital issues, 20%. Uh, depression, another 20%. Anxiety, 15%. Anger, trauma, stress, bereavement, addiction, attachment, employment. All great reasons to get help. But as you heard in the testimony of Joan, uh, people come sometimes just to wrestle through some of the normal issues of life, uh, midlife crises and struggles and, and so on. So, congregation, you should be receiving via email or uh, on paper uh, that pamphlet that we sent out again uh just before March, way back when, um, we'll be sending it out again along with a link to this video. So please prayerfully consider and be ready uh, to vote at our congregational meeting or by proxy, uh, whatever works for you. Blessings to you all. Uh, on behalf of council and, uh, and myself, Pastor Dan, we'll talk to you later.